Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hello there. Hey guys. Hope you're all doing well. My name's Connor, if you're new. And I like to learn things. A lot of different things on the internet, on YouTube. Fascinating. Join me. Uh, to learn about... Words are difficult. Land Rovers. Okay, I know it's an iconic British car. And I want to learn more about it right now. You guys are going to help me. Subscribe, like, uh, Land Rover World. History of the Land Rover. Discover the amazing story behind the Land Rover. Let's go, guys. History of Land Rover. I would say I'll try not to pause too much, but I, I think I'm going to have way too many questions. The history of Land Rover. How it started. Are you a fan of Land Rover? The vehicle that can take you to the heights where your visit was impossible otherwise. The impossible expeditions that have been made possible by this beautiful vehicle and the unreachable places can be conquered and enjoyed now. But if you are really a fan of Land Rover, then have you ever tried to look at its history? How did it start? And what was the first Land Rover to ever exist? If you don't know that, then you can't be a fan. This is what I this car right here is what I think of when I think of a Land Rover. Uh David Attenborough in Africa with a crew filming cheetahs on the savanna in this car. That's just what I think of when I hear Land Rover. Um I'd assume it started Rover to ever exist. If you don't it's, know it, it's like the British version of the Jeep. Or like the Jeep was a version of uh, this. All right, sorry. Pausing, yeah, pausing too early. What was the first Land Rover to ever exist? If you don't know that, then you can't be a fan. But no worries. In today's video, I'm going to tell you the full history of this beast. Awesome. So stay tuned until the end if you want to enjoy this journey with us. People are always buying new models and 4x4 vehicles by Land Rover to go to their favorite places. This is because they want a safe journey and also a luxurious trip to their beloved destinations. The first Land Rover ever built was made from the parts of the Rover cars and it was not intentional to make it a separate line of cars. Post-World War II, I, I would have thought uh, this would be the main kind of one of the main vehicles to use uh, made from the parts of the rover cars the and it was not intentional to make it a separate line of cars the purpose of making land rovers was to compete with the jeeps in britain it happened in 1948 when the first land rover was built in great britain the most interesting thing that you should know about the land rover is that its first sketch was made on the sand in 1947 in wells beach Morris Wilkes, who was the technical director of Rover, was working on his farm in Anglesey on the Jeep. His brother, who was the managing director of Rover, Spencer Wilkes, along with Morris felt that there is a huge gap in the market for the Jeeps. They noticed people are not giving much attention to making some good quality with some extra feature Jeeps. They started to build a Land Rover from Jeep chassis and old Rover car parts. Morris was in love with his Jeep and he used it on the farm happily. But he also Morris was in love with his Jeep and two things. What am I looking at right here? Oh, is that a headlight? And also the Jeeps. Along with Morris felt that there is a huge gap in the market for the Jeeps. Just fast forward if you guys want. Just uh, did you say oh. on the Jeep? Who was the technical director of Rover? Was Wells Beach. Morris Wilkes, who was the technical director of Rover, was working on his farm in Anglesey on the Jeep. His brother, who was the managing director of Rover, Spencer Wilkes, along with Morris, felt that there is a huge gap in the market for the Jeeps. They noticed people are not giving much attention to making some good quality with some extra feature Jeeps. So he was working on his farm with, with an American Jeep? And then, am I understanding that right? And, and then they made some tweaks and 
for a, a market in They started in to build a Land Rover from Jeep chassis and old Rover car parts. Morris was in love with his Jeep and he used it on the farm happily. But he also knew that it will not work for so long and eventually it will break. So he was also sad about this, but the idea came to his mind about why not make his own Jeep. World War II had a great impact on the Rover company. It was totally devastated. The raw materials of the company were rationed. But Morris didn't lose hope, and he knew that if he made the Jeep and exported it, he could bring the currency to his company. So, the work on making the first Land Rover on the market... Guys, I'm not going to rewind again. I'm, I'm just going to ask the question so I can go forward without having to keep thinking about this and, and keeping track. That My confusion is that they said using old rover and jeep parts they they made kind of you know this new type of of rover right but but what i i thought the rover what what is the first rover if the rover was after the jeep just forget it. Just I'm I'm hopeless. Lose hope, and he time. So the jeep and exported it. He could bring the currency to his company. So the work on making the first Land Rover on the market started at that time. The first and original design of the Land Rover was made by Tom Burton. It took one year to make the vehicle from its design to its full form. Wilkes was still using the old Rover Jeep he made from parts, but now he had something new to play with. Due to the crisis, he couldn't use steel for the new Rover, and instead, he used aluminium to make it. They launched Land Rover in 1948 at the Amsterdam Motor Show and gained huge success. People loved the design and other features of the Jeep. The gap in the market was filled by the hard work of Wilkes. By the end of that year, Rover started to sell Jeeps to about 70 countries. But the Wilkes brothers had to spread awareness and convince the farmers that Land Rover could do all the farming jobs with greater efficiency than a horse. They made commercials. You mean then a tra they had tractors at the time? They've... I would think the wheels... Um... And every farming jobs with greater efficiency than a horse. They made commercials and every means to tell the farmers about this great vehicle, which could move with 20 times more speed and could help them a lot more in farming purposes. People slowly started to get convinced and the demand increased a lot. Now, in 1950, some changes were made to the original design of the Rover to make it more efficient for work and for travel. Guys, so this isn't just for, for, for uh, Land Rovers. But so, so I, you guys told me this already in like a year a year ago a video I asked this question. It, the purpose of the grill in the front of the car is to help cool the engine, right? It, it's it's kind of like uh, it's just a, rather than having a closed front, like is there any other purpose? for not just having this completely closed, no holes, other than just it helps put air into where the engine is to cool it off. ...line of the Rover to make it more efficient for work and for travel. Powerful headlights and hard tops were fitted. The four-wheel system was also changed, along with the addition of a four-cylinder engine. In 1951, the 1.6-litre engine of the Rover was replaced by a 2-litre engine. In 1953, the wheelbase of the Land Rover was increased to 86 inches to carry heavy loads easily. A new power unit was added in 1955. So, developments were made continuously, and they became the best friends of the farmers. They could perform the tiring tasks of farming easily now. Also, the military from around the world demanded more Land Rovers day by day. The Rover Company made appealing commercials for people to let them know and understand the value of this beast. They described this one's nice too. People to let them know and understand the value of this beast. They
they describe the features in commercials and demand increased more around the globe. Along with farming and the military purposes, the demand for the Land Rover made its way into other areas. Soon it was felt that the Rover should be made for off-road drive, the four-wheel drive. People bought these Rovers and started to use them for recreational purposes and for exploring. Guys, so, you know, at, at, at in uh, a lot of cars, if you're going through water, at, at a certain depth, the, the engine is going to get flooded with water, right? How far up, like what part of the engine is the critical one to keep dry from, is it just the, the whole jet engine or is there just an exhaust pipe? Could, could you like extend it out of the hood like they did with some, uh, I think tanks in the D-Day invasion when they had to go through Ooh, these rovers, like, like what in the engine couldn't work anymore because it, it got water in it. Did it just like flood all of the piston? Chambers starts to use them for drive, the four wheel drive. People bought these rovers and starts to use them for recreational purposes and for exploring. They found it the best vehicle to go to places where others couldn't. Interestingly, the first ever vehicle that was seen by one third of the world's population was the Land Rover. It is so because it could move on the difficult terrains and places where it was difficult earlier with other vehicles. You would be surprised to know that the first cross-continental expedition was the 18,000 mile Oxford and Cambridge one. It was a journey from London to Singapore. The drivers of the Land Rover in the ex- You can fast forward guys if you want. Jesus Christ. So that's 6,700 miles, and that's as the crow flies. All right. Like, what is it? What is it from, uh, like Anchorage, Alaska, or like Alaska to, uh, like Patagonia? Anyways, okay, yeah, sorry. That, that, that's, that's insane. Expedition. It was a journey from London to Singapore. The drivers of the Land Rover in the expedition were greeted on the way by curious crowds. There was international press coverage for them at the time. When they arrived, they were given champagne toasts. In the meantime, the wife of Wilkes was not happy, as she said that the design is not female-friendly, and she didn't like it. Series 2 of the... What does that even mean? What makes the design male or female friendly? It was international press coverage for them at the time. When they arrived, they were given champagne toasts. In the meantime, the wife of Wilkes was not happy, as she said that the design is not female friendly, and she didn't like it. Of the car? Series 2 of the Land Rover. Was anybody even thinking about that until she said it? Rover with the entire new model was presented in 1958. Ten years after the launch of the first Land Rover in the same Amsterdam Motor Show, this new model was launched. It had a wider body with a concealed chassis and barreled sides. The engine was improved to 2.25 litre petrol capacity. What is this for? So is it that there's the battery. Uh, radiator, maybe? Uh, exhaust? Here's the main engine, right? Is that fuel tank? Fuel goes... Is that oil? And again, it made a success in the world. The rear window was also enlarged for greater visibility. Now the windows were made from non-scratch glass. 
These new changes made the Rover easy to drive. Again, many commercials were made for this new series, and people bought more of them. Ooh, I love the triple front seat. Five. Again, many commercials That's were great. made for this new series, and people bought more of them for their ease. A few of the models were exported due to strict import regulations in America, but Land Rover was the first choice of customers in England. The Honestly, growing up, I, this is going to anger a lot of people. Maybe it not. It might not at this point because I'm sure it's so often you just think Americans think everything is American. I thought Land Rovers and, and Range Rovers were American cars. Just going to say that. The export to the U.S. But Land Rover was the first choice of customers in England. The export to the U.S. was stopped because the company couldn't afford the requirements. As demand increased, the company thought to build a more civilized model, which could be owned in cities, streets, and countries by people. The company chose Sven King to design and take on this project. He was able to produce an innovative gas turbine car. Spen decided to take the rover to Safari for two days competition with other famous cars. The team was there to check the off-road capabilities of the Land Rover and other vehicles. Able to How is a gas turbine innovative? He chose Spen King to design and take on this project. He was able to produce an innovative gas turbine car. As opposed Spen decided to... to take the rover to Safari for two days competition with other famous cars. The team was there to check the off-road capabilities of the Land Rover and other vehicles. The design team built many models and prototypes before reaching the final conclusion. Finally, they made the Range Rover. Meanwhile, in 1961, Series 2A with higher power output models were made. In 1965, Land Rover acquired alloy V8 engine, having a 3.5 litre petrol capacity. In 1966, the production of Land Rover reached half a million mark. Another great achievement happened in 1967, when Rover merged with a company called Leland. Then, in the next year, Rover, Leland, and Triumph joined British Motor Corporation. So, the company is expanding its routes all over the world and increasing its production day by day. In 1970, a new V8 engine with more power and permanent four-wheel drive was made. After this, the Range Rover became the automotive range in Europe. This new Range Rover won many awards because of its design. Why weren't cars always just four-wheel drive? It, was it just a lot cheaper and easier to just have the two-wheel two drive? Like, is that the only reason? It's not like they couldn't imagine having all four wheels, you know, spinning on their own. I'm assuming it was just cost? To test the capability of this new model, they were tested on the roughest paths and trails in countries. Panama, Sahara, and from Alaska to Africa, the models passed all of the tests and attracted many customers around the world. In 1982, Range Rover production reached 1 million units. Series of commercials were made where Range Rover was shown conquering the roughest and most adventurous routes around the globe. The company made its routes everywhere, except in North America. So, the company had to make some new strategies to export there. In 1987, Range Rover was exported to America, which was equipped with options never seen before in any Rover vehicle. In 1989, eight Range Rovers made their first expedition of a thousand miles in North America. Now, engineers made some high-tech innovations in the vehicle, with time as demand increased. Meanwhile, Range Rover joined other companies like BMW and others. In the same year, with some amazing features, the Discovery by Land Rover was launched. Then, in 1997, Freelander was introduced to the market. This was one of the brand new models. Land Rover celebrated its 50th anniversary with the exhibition of some limited edition models. In 2000, Land Rover was sold to Ford Motor Company, and in the next year, 3 million units were produced. The Discovery gets a facelift as Family Face in 2000. Wait, so Land Rover is now an American company? 2000 units were produced. 
the Discovery gets a facelift as Family Face in 2002. BBC called Land Rover the greatest car of all time in 2003. In the next year, Discovery 3 debuted in the market at Geneva Motor Show. Then, in 2005, the Land Rover Sports was launched. It was the greatest achievement of Land Rover of all time. It had a dynamic response system with a 4.2 litre petrol V8 engine. In the next year, diesel electric hybrid SUV was revealed at Geneva Motor Show, and in the same year, Freelancer 2 was also launched. In 2008, the Land Rover was sold to Tata Motors, and Discovery turned 20 in 2009. So, the Land Rover has proved its abilities in the toughest trails and off-road paths, and is still continuing to improve its features with advanced techs in the world. So, did you like the journey of Land Rover from the farm to the desert and to the highest mountains? Tell us. I definitely, I loved it. I, it, I definitely had seen it as, like, if you were, uh, if you were, you know the term soccer mom? I guess it would be football mom. You know, it's what we call soccer over here. Soccer mom is just like that, uh, you know, she's married with with kids, her husband's working. And so she has to do all the chores and the kids stuff and take them to soccer practice. Soccer mom, right? And then so the soccer mom vehicles are, you know, from the van to like the GMC, uh, Acadia, I think it was a good one. I remember my mom had the excursion. This thing was enormous. But like it, it, the wealthier, you know, is it, like if, if you're a soccer mom and you drive a really nice black Range Rover, it's just like, oh, they, they have money, you know, it's a nice car. I enjoyed this video a it's lot. It's in the comments section. Thanks for watching. Um, the original Defender. 1998, how was that one? See, see, hey, it's it's got the uh the thing, the thing, uh thing, 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 thing. Um, does that mean it can go underwater further? Love y'all. Hope you're all doing well. Would appreciate any comments down below. Uh, it, it always helps the algorithm just to leave any comment. You know, great video. Just found your channel. Love it. Just to help uh spread more to YouTube. Um, liked, subscribed. Awesome. Love y'all. Would appreciate any comments down below. I know I sounded like an idiot probably many times in that video. That's fine. Let me know where I did. Correct me. Help me out. And uh, hopefully I'll see you next time. If you're not doing well mentally, guys, all right? I don't say this enough. Big deal for me. Chin up. Emotions are fickle. Fickle. Subject to change. You'll be good soon. Don't worry. Bye, guys.